I think stepping into the NFT space is not not I mean it's not just about being innovative. It's actually putting your brand to a global standard to to the go I me mean, to the global audience, and your brand reach will be so much more as well. And if you look at it in the Web two world, in the real life world, for you to even be on the global stand, you will need to pay so much marketing. You might need to even have a physical store in the states, or you know have a few stores around the world. But being in the NFT space, what you need to do is just to start your own project, and it's literally it's almost free, you know, to to create your project. Um, other than hiring people, the yeah. cost is so minimal. And if you were to invest in the land in the metaverse. That is already being in the global stand. Welcome to the iSearch podcast. Today we have Nicole Yap, the founder of Asian, on the show. So Asian is one of the most well-known global Asian Asian brand in the Web three space, having sold out eight thousand eight hundred and eighty eight NFTs, and they have also generated secondary sales of over three thousand ETH. Which is approximately nine million USD within twenty four hours. So today I'll be discussing with Nicole on how brands can launch their own NFT successfully. So welcome to the show, Nicole. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, really excited to be here and to share some of the knowledge that I have with you guys. All right, great. So let's begin. So for brands who wish to get into like the Web three NFT world, what are some things that they should know before like even jumping into this space? I guess. Because I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have been hearing about NFTs, hearing about brands creating their own NFTs and selling out, and also you hear all these crazy figures that people have made over the like in the past 24 hours, you know, in terms of like a million figures.、Um, but I would say that、uh, like in reality, nothing is easy. So even with the brands or like all these other projects that sold out in a few seconds in the past twenty four hours, making so much money, a lot of pre planning has done, a lot of pre marketing has done, and there's so many effort、um, that has put in to even、um, able to get that su- that success that they have. So I would say if you are new to the space, or if you're a brand owner yourself, if you own a company, a, you know,、uh, a project,、um, firstly would be to get well versed. Into the space and also into crypto. You don't have to know all the coins that they have in in the market.、Um, just the really important one, even、um, just the, just knowledge such as like what is Bitcoin, what is Ethereum, what is the difference of that, and also what are the top crypto in the space. Just things like that to to kind of get yourself into the space.、Um, also, it would be great. To kind of look at the other NFT projects that have sold out, that is successful, that has that has their own really strong like communities and stuff like that, so that you can kind of look at them and kind of use them as like a case study of what you can do. Yeah, so essentially, the first step would be in instead of like take like forking out a whole lump sum and be like, okay, like what am I gonna do, right? Like like how are we gonna get this done? You should first maybe start off buying your first NFT. Investing in you know crypto, you don't have to invest in like a big bag. Even just a hundred dollars would do as well. Then you can kind of、um, study how the market works, how volatile it is, how the community is, how is people in the NFT market is.、Um, you can start by、um, like let's say even after you purchase your first NFT, you can jump on their Discord, follow them on Twitter, follow them on social media, and. You can kind of connect with other people in the space. I think that is the best way you can learn and really like step foot into understanding how this whole NFT and how this whole community and project really works. Hmm. I mean, it's like the best advice is like to have some skin in the game first, lah. So like buy your first Ethereum or buy your first NFT so that you will know like how the community works and whatnot before you even start launching your own project. Yeah, for sure. And then later on, once you are well versed in the space, maybe after like a month or two in the space, then、um, I'm pretty sure you will be able to see there are some potentials that your brand and your company can can jump into the space and offer some sort of、um, utility, some sort of you know experience to to the current. Web three people that are already in the space. So let's say if you are a fashion brand, what you can do is you can even launch your your NFT 
you can have your own community in it, right? And if you are like a fashion brand with your own fashion re retailer, if you have your own like store with real life products, you can set up your own store in the metaverse, right? You can buy a small plot of land, you can set up like a booth there, things like that, where you can play around with it. And then even with your NFTs, you can tie them up with physical products. There is actually a lot of things that you can do in the space. Um, and what I love about it, it's because it's so global. You don't have to be in like a specific country to be in the, in the NFT space. And also in terms of your target audience, it's everyone in the world that has access to the internet. Yeah. So that is, that is something that is really exciting about this space. Yeah. I, I mean, like, you know, like ring gates keep on dropping, right? So like, instead of selling just to Malaysians, this NFT space has allowed brands to like sell globally. So you can, you can sell in Ethereum and then you can convert it into USD and your audience is like much bigger than say just the Malaysian crowd. Yes, definitely. I think stepping into the NFT space is not, not, I mean, it's not just about being innovative. It's actually putting your brand to a global standard to, to the go I mean, to the global audience and your brand reach will be so much more as well. And if you look at it in the Web2 world, in the real life world, for you to even be on the global stand, you will need to pay so much marketing. You might need to even have a physical store in the States or, you know, have a few stores around the world. But being in the NFT space, what you need to do is just to start your own project. And it's literally, it's almost free, you know, to, to create your project um, other than hiring people. The yeah. cost is so minimal. And if you were to invest in the land in the metaverse, that is already being in the global stand. Um, so the cost is really minimum compared to like the price that you pay in the real world to be in the global stage. Yep, agree. So I think for the pre-launch phase is very important. So how can brands like generate hype during the pre-launch phase before they even sell? And also like what are some of the marketing strategies that, for, that have worked well for Asian? For me, because when I first started, I mean, I'm not a brand. I don't really have a audience to begin with. Yeah. So for me, how I how I got my first um, group of supporters was through an organic matter. Um, I was in Twitter Spaces. So on so on Twitter, you can actually hold like a like a space, just like Clubhouse. So it's free. Um, you can just create a space talk in it and random people, people can actually just jump in and hear you speak to connect with you and stuff like that. So that was the marketing that I did. I was on Twitter spaces every day. I was just there. The whole idea of how I even created Asian is that when I was in the space, I couldn't find something that resonate with me. Um, and also there weren't any female Asian projects out there. So I wanted to be the first. So that is something that I was really passionate to to do. And uh, even when I was in the spaces, I was telling people like my stories and I was talking about because I'm Malaysian and then I grew up, you know, um, exposed to a lot of different ethnicity and different races. And not everyone is as privileged as we are. A lot of people in the States, they, they never even, they, I mean, they, they don't have an opportunity to visit like Malaysia, right? So they don't really know how Asia is like. And there is a lot of misconceptions of people. It's really funny because when I was in the Twitter space, most of my audience were people in the States and they thought that Asia is just like one large um, continent, one, one large country. And they thought we all eat noodles and then we just have like one skin color. And I was like, no, like Asia is huge. You know, we have different races, colors, cultures, you know, it's, it's huge. Um, so this is why I wanted to bring that knowledge and to embrace and to celebrate the Asian cultures um, into the NFT world, right? Because back then the NFT space was really male dominated. All of the NFT projects, um, they are like little cute animals. And, you know, most of them are like guys, like male, male figures, right? Like, like crypto punk bought apes, although the, although it's like a monkey figure, but they are actually guys. Um, yeah. So that was my story. And I feel that in the NFT space, people do love listening to your why, like, why are you here and your purpose? Uh, because at the end of the day, ha like launching your NFTs, you are actually creating your own community. So the same goes to brands. If you are a brand that is, let's say, um, 
promoting like sustainability or you know you guys use organic cotton or you know if there is a story behind your brand of why are you doing this uh, you can actually tell that story into um, the web tree space in 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 the nft space and people would support you they'll be like oh i love this course and i and i'll support you i'll buy your i mean i would buy your nft and that is how you create like a like a community right it's like a bunch of people that come together that resonate with your story that love what you do and support you and with that strong community then later on there is so many things that you can do with with a bunch of people that are that are so passionate about your brand so that would be the first thing that you would want to achieve rather than just like selling out and just like you know launching all these bunch of products and putting it out there because in the web tree space if you don't have a solid community to support you even having 100 brands or like sorry 100 products or 100 utilities out there um there is there is no use for it because like who is it for right there's literally no audience so that would be the first step which is to establish your why and also kind of putting your story out there and once people are able to connect with you love your brand love your story they would they would organically buy and with a push of marketing uh, maybe pay some like um, ads or anything else that would definitely take your brand to the next level to a wider reach right and later on then you can introduce um, like products physical products to your to your um, community or you can even convert it as like a membership card so whoever that owns your nft if they go to the store they get 10 percent off you know and then you can kind of do activities with them um having perks utility and stuff like that yeah there's a lot of ways where you can play around with it yeah i mean for web 2 world we are always very used to like uh, facebook instagram google so for Web3, it's like, I, I noticed like Twitter and also even Discord is like the, the most important uh, so-called apps that you, you have to engage your community through there. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So does it mean that from your your flow is like you go to Twitter spaces and you um, talk about your story and whatnot and people start following you on Twitter and from Twitter you send them to your Discord and then you continue to engage them from, from your Discord? Yeah, so just like any other NFT project, you I think it's kind of a compulsory that you know that you will to need have to have a Discord. The reason why Discord is because so far it's the only platform where you can gather like I think up to two hundred thousand people in the same room live and you can hang out together, you can do announcements, you can do giveaways, there's so many things you can do with it. Um and also you can play games and everything else it's it's the only platform where you can gather so many people at one point because um if you were to open like a whatsapp group or a telegram group i think the max you can put is like maybe ten thousand or fifty thousand people in a telegram group um, but for this call you can put up to like two hundred thousand people so that is the most ideal um this is why we use discord so for me yes i usually connect people on twitter and what i do is i will have my discord link on my bio so most of the time people will just click on it and then just join yeah yeah and then what, one thing i like about this course that you can because like whatsapp sometimes the message can be like a lot but then this course you can like split it into like different different topics like subtopics and whatnot so people with interest they can just go to that subtopic and read everything that they want instead of like whatsapp you need to search or scroll or like 1000 messages that kind of thing so yeah, yeah. so one thing I like about Discord is you can actually um, have them categorized. So you yeah. can have announcements, games, general yeah. chat, Chinese chat, you know, like different language chat. And you can do like support chat, you know, or like open a ticket chat, you know. There's a lot of things and you can kind of organize them. So this is why I like Discord is kind of like the ideal. Yeah. And, it, and it's that. free, right? Yeah, it's free. It's free. It's, and it's so amazing. It's- yeah. yeah. Is there any ads in like Discord? Because like you know, like Facebook, Twitter, we always see a lot of ads. But because this Discord is free, right? so do they put any ads over there? Um, no, I, I don't. I haven't seen any ads. Yeah, I don't okay. think they should. If if they start putting ads, I think that would be quite annoying. Yeah. Because yeah. thinking <laughs> yeah. how how can they monetize it? Because it's since it's free, right? Yeah. No, they do. So you need to um, if you pay it like a like a subscription, 
you can actually boost the page and stuff and you can change like profile picture and your pre- and your and your profile picture can actually be a gif and stuff oh, if okay. you have like the what's it called if you upgrade it so you need to yeah. pay i think about ten dollars a month or so ah, yeah okay okay then it makes sense now okay yeah um <laughs> just like you mentioned one of the marketing strategies to like run ads right what type of ads have worked well for you for me, I would say that because I launched on December last year. So mm. back then, marketing for like the NFT projects and stuff weren't a lot. Um, and the only the only marketing that I've paid is through like influencers in the space. So influ- like Web3 influencers in the space that are like on Twitter. So what you do is you give them like X amount of Eve and they will kind of post a giveaway post for you. And it's good because once they share and then they have about like 2,000 participants and then you will get 2,000 followers technically because they'll need to like, share um, and retweet, right? Um, But for me, I do see that that is not maybe, okay, you do get numbers, but then those people are there just to win the giveaway. So there's a lot of times where we notice that during the giveaway, we have amount of followers and after like two weeks you realize that the people that follow you they actually unfollow you after the campaign has ended so to me maybe that is not the best way to to spend your money because um at the end of the day you want you want loyal people in your in your community you don't want them to just come in just for the giveaway and just um you know just leave right um so to me from the best marketing that i have done was just organic marketing, just showing people the artwork and them really uh, resonating with my story, really liking the artwork and they just support it. Yeah. But I would say like if you're a brand and you have like X amount of um, marketing budget to spend, you can reach out to like Web2 influencers, right? You can put things on the billboard. You can do, I mean, you can run Facebook ads, all that kind of things yeah it should work yeah actually billboard still works i mean uh have you seen the billboard of another nft project called punks malaysia yeah it is it, yeah. they are still there yeah they're still there right yeah yeah so yeah it's really it really still works yeah. mm. have you tried um twitter ads no i have not yeah i have yeah. not so i think our team will need to start exploring as well yeah some yeah. other ads revenue yeah all if right. it works, I'll keep you updated. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, so yeah. pre-launch phase done, and now is the actual launch day. So, what should brands like uh, be expecting, and also like how can they ensure like a smooth launch without any complaints? I would say getting a dev, like a like a good dev, is really important because for me personally, before the launch, I actually got attacked, like my, like my website got attacked. And then, you know, people trying to like blackmail me saying that like, oh, if you pay me this amount of ETH, then um, I'll, I'll make sure your, your mint runs smoothly and stuff like that. Um, so the technical side of things are a few things that other projects didn't really like consider, including myself. Like you would never thought like people would attack you. Um, so that is, that is something that, um, you guys will need to kind of, kind of think about and to make sure that your dev is like ready for that, um, just in case. Yeah. So I would say for the minting progress, a lot of the times people would expect you to mint out in like a few seconds or a few days, and that is not sustainable at all. Um, for us we had a few comments because we took 15 days to sell out and at the 10th day a lot of members actually came to us and be like oh if you don't sell out in five days then you guys are done Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it was really crazy because to even in the real world to sell 8888 in like five days yeah it's not it's it's really ridiculous, right, in the real world. But then in the Web3 world, everybody just have high, high expectations. Yeah, so even to me, to sell out in 15 days, that is insane. 15 days to sell out 8,888 items, right? I would say that right now, things are much, um, I wouldn't say slower, but things are much more um, realistic, you know? So to, I mean, for, for the minting part, to sell out, in like a month or two months that is still okay 
you know, that is that is reasonable. Um, especially if you were to launch like a ten thousand collection, right? That's a lot. That that's a that's a huge number. Um, yeah. I'm curious to know how how do you set the pricing? Like, how much do you do you like set the pricing? Is it just based on a gut feel, or do you do any like a survey or something? Yeah, definitely. So, um, for us at that. At that moment, um, when when we launched, the market price for NFTs was about three hundred to four hundred per NFT. So that to was in um, US USD? dollars. Yeah, yeah US yeah. dollars. So this is why we priced it at zero point zero eight ETH, um, because at that time, of course, you would wanna, you would definitely want to look at the market value as well, because you don't want to um, sell it too expensive or sell it like you know too too cheap, because people will be like, oh, why are you selling so so cheap? Is this like a rug, right? Or even mm-hmm. if you sell it too expensive, they'll be like, oh, the rest of the NFTs are only three hundred dollars. Why are you selling it for six hundred dollars, right? But of course, if you are a brand. And, you know, depending on your utility that you'll be offering, if you say that if you buy this NFT, you're, you're, you're essentially buying this or, or getting this, I'm pretty sure you guys can just price it at whatever reasonable price that you guys think. Yeah, so I guess it's quite sub- subjective, you know, in terms of pricing, but definitely you don't want to sell it too cheap as well. Yeah. Mm. What are some like utilities or benefits that brands can incorporate into this NFT? Most... I mean, mostly would be um, membership, membership passes. So if you, ha- I mean, if you guys have like real life um, retail stores, real life products, um, or even like loyalty programs, you know, for them to spend this X amount, then you will, you you will get this this amount. Um, yeah, things like that. So it really depends on the brands, or else you can kind of tie it up with. Um, like a discount or else you can um, do like a exclusive because like for instance let's say if you are a brand and you have like new collections coming up and let's say if you have like a little show for the collection you can be like oh only for nft holders that hold this then you guys will be able to party with us to join us for this um, upcoming collection um yeah or else you can tie it to like physical products as well um in terms of like buying this nft get you this product Right, and this is an exclusive drop only, and I do think that people do um, like exclusiveness and you yeah. know getting something that is limited. Yeah, that is only eight thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight. No more. Yeah, and there's like eight eight billion people in the world. You know, yeah. yeah. So okay, I mean this limited. one, the utilities and also benefits is really up to like the brand's creativity. What do they want to offer to their audience? Because they will know their audience the best. Yeah. All right. So pre-launch done, actual launch done, assuming smooth launch. So what comes next after the NFT is sold out in, in let's say, like like what you mentioned, like 15 days and NFT is sold out. What, what happens next? I think that is where the real work starts. Um, that's where people will start looking at you and, you know, start asking when will you guys execute it? Uh, because before selling out, you are basically selling the dream, selling the dream of if you buy this NFT, this is something that you will get. This is this is what we will offer. And once it sells out, that is where real work begins. This is where you'll need to execute things. It's where you will need to deliver like real life utility and you know something solid out there. So I guess this is where the fun starts. You know, people will have expectations. They will ask, when will we get this? When will we, you know, when when will this event happen? Um, and that is where you will learn how to lead a community, how to make sure to not say the wrong thing. And because people in the Web3 space, they are really not, I mean, some of them, they can be um, quite unrealistic because like to me, when, when we first sell out the next day, people ask us like, oh, uh, what is happening today? And I was like, what? I, I just <laughs> like, we just like, we just sell out. Like there is, there is no way we can roll something right now. Right. Yeah. So I guess that is where you start delivering um, all the things that you have said. So if you say that we will be having a party in this event, then that's where you will start to kind of plan like the dates and everything else, make sure it's smooth. Um, and I think communication is really important because 
at the same time, it's like this space moves really fast, right? And there are some some things that you say or some things that you promise um, that might sound good the last time or like the last month, and then right now it doesn't make sense or it's not even achievable anymore. So it's important for us to be honest. So even the, if there are some things where we can't do, where we can't deliver, it's good to just tell your community, be like, hey, this is what we wanted to do. But later on, we worked out like the weather doesn't work or, or the location doesn't fit. So we're going to change, you know, um, I think communication is really important rather than just leaving your community hanging. Um, because having an NFT project is really different. It's not like you are selling a product and then that's it. You know, you're selling kind of like a ticket for people to be in a community and then this is where some like it's a community where they are like like for instance they are on discord right and then they are just waiting for you to feed them waiting for you to give them something so communication is really important and and i mean what i learned is that there were a few times where things didn't go my way and what we did as a team is we didn't want to upset them Right. So we just kind of like brushed it off and we thought like they would forget. And no, they, they never forget. You know, they'll be like, oh, you said this would happen. Where, where is it? Right. And then they will get really upset if you don't address it. Um, so as brands, it's really important to to make sure that they are well taken care of. They are well informed. So even if things don't go well, you should tell them as well. And uh, most of the time when you tell them some like even if you if you give them like a bad news, surprisingly, the community is quite they're quite understanding, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's okay, we can do something else. Yeah. So that is a few things that I learned. Yeah. How often do you communicate to your community? And also do you communicate everything through Discord? Or do you send out emails to them as well? I mean, most of the time, it's just through um, Discord announcements. It's really mm -hmm. easy because you just write the message that you want to do and then just tag everyone and everyone in Discord will get notified and they can read about it. And if, they, if they're not happy, they can just go onto the general chat room and discuss about it. And I usually will just pop in. And sometimes mm -hmm. if they are really unhappy about something, they'll just tag me. They'll just tag me and be like, hey, I, I really don't like this or something. And we can just talk, talk it out, you know, talk it out in a public space. And I think that is really important, you know, to, to, I mean, if there is a problem, uh, we should just address it. Right. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, just now what you say is very interesting. People are not just buying a product from the NFT. Well, I noticed like people is like buying a lifetime ticket with this NFT. Yeah. It's like, just, they just like pay once and they get club. like a, yeah, yeah it's an exclusive, a, exclusive club. Club. A lifetime, lifetime club. access. Yeah. yeah. I think one more final thing is just um, how many people do you need in your team generally and also what kind of roles do brands need to hire besides a developer? Okay, this is a, this is a good question. Well, for me, I started off with like three people in the team. So that's myself. And then I had a lead artist, which is our co-founder because I couldn't draw. So I needed someone that, that could help me with the drawings. And then we had this other co-founder. Um, he's the one that actually got me into NFTs. So he was the one that actually minted Bot Ape and he's like, Nicole, you need to get a Bot Ape. And that was how my NFT journey started. So it started with the three of us. And later on, it's more of like, um, I just pick up people along the way. So later on, I realized that, oh, I need someone in the technical side of things to, to do the back end stuff like on Discord and stuff like that. So I got another person. And then later on, we we... I realized that we need a copywriter. So I got a copywriter. Then we needed a social media guy. Then we got a social media guy. And then the first team that I had was a core team of like 12 because we had um, three other support artists. So artists, we had four because we wanted to speed up the process. So we had a core team of 12 um, when we minted. And I would say for brands, what you'll need is definitely... Um, someone that is in charge of all the ideas and stuff like that, like the founder. And then you'll need someone to do the social media because it's really important. Communication is really important. You need to keep them updated. What is the next thing? So social media for Twitter, for Discord, management, and then you'll definitely need a dev, like a, like a dev to do the smart contract and stuff like that. And definitely you will need like an artist to do the artwork for the NFTs. 
and yeah, I guess that is about it. That is that is the essentials of what you need, and then the rest is, it's up to you. You can you can have like a marketing lead, you can have an operation manager, all this kind of thing. I think you can kind of figure out and see if you really need them, like a copywriter and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, got it. So to wrap up, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience? Well, you could find me on Twitter. My handle is Asian Mom, and if you have any questions, you can just feel free to DM me. I'll be happy to answer them. I would say that because I'm in the crypto scene since 2013, uh, I've been here for a long time, and even with our NFT project, uh, most of our community is towards the West. So I do see that in terms of Malaysia, Singapore, in terms of this side of the world, we are picking up.、Um, Like adoption of NFTs, of crypto, and stuff like that. So, if you are interested to jump into this space, you know, just come in and explore. It's a whole new rabbit hole, and this is the future. You know, so regardless whether you like it or not, yeah, yeah, we still move into the regardless of you understanding it or、yeah. whether you like it or not. Like this technology will stay, and it's here to stay.、Um, so yeah, that is all I have to say. Thanks for having、okay. me. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks for coming onto the show, Nicole. Check out Asian down below, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.